Hello, uh, welcome again to the IEBC uh, interview here at the General Meeting 2016 in Frankfurt. My name is Kurt Schlüttelburg, I'm from the DKE and uh, today in this interview I will talk about the core topic of the, uh, uh, of the whole event, it's the digitalization and in particular the digitalization of standardization, what's all about. So, um, of course, I'm not alone. We have an, uh, uh, a known expert in that field here, in the field of digital transformation. So I uh, welcome Lars Repesgaard. Hello. Hello, Lars. Uh, you're working for the Fakt and Contour GmbH in its uh, communication consultancy in yes. Hamburg. And uh, you lead at the Fakt and Contour GmbH the project uh, Digital Shift. Yes, we do. Okay. This and is an internal uh, transformation project we try to keep up with the modern digital age as well and uh, there we have also quite a lot of things to do to to develop new products new um, ways to serve our customers so we are right in the trans transition as well and there is another very important aspect uh, of you you are a fan of the FC St. Pauli yes I am it's I have a, a famous club uh, in Hamburg yes I have yeah. a neck for underdogs and I don't think the success of a sports team is uh, as important as the atmosphere in the stadium. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you, uh, during the reinvention lab, which started today, uh, you just gave a talk about digitalization, of course. And uh, what would you say? Um, uh, what is the most important thing, or the most important aspect of digital transformation, in your opinion? I think the most important aspect about digital transformation is that it will not stop. No matter what we think of it, no matter whether we think it's a good idea that companies collect data or that they build apps or that people talk on Facebook or that people are buying uh, or uh, people are buying or companies are building um, autonomous cars, it doesn't matter what we think about it. It is a global process of innovation and there's many, many players, many small inno innovations coming together. So it's important that we embrace digital transformation as an opportunity that we um, find a strategy what we can do as a business as an organization or as a society and um, that we're ready to um, work on this change and to see what we can do with these uh, new possibilities instead of saying oh i think it's dangerous i think it's boring i don't like it it's challenging something that is very dear to me that's not a, um, a point of view that's going to help. Mm. Okay, and the industry, the role of the industry, how is the industry being changed by digitalization? Um, I think every industry is affected. Um, every product will be replaced by a digital product or every product will at least get a digital layer on top. Every product will become a smart product. Um, when we look at the um, smart home technologies, we begin to understand that it's not only the fridge that uh, has been going around for many years that's just supposed to order our um, supplies in you, but it's uh, technology like, like Amazon Echo, for example, where you just have a device at your home listening to what you need. Um, every aspect of, of the consumer life cycle uh, becomes a, uh, has um, a digital dimension added on top of it. And this brings uh, huge opportunities for all industries, but also huge um, challenges. Mm, okay. And if we now come to standardization, this is our topic here, of course, during the general meeting. I mean, how will it be affected by digitalization? For example, in your talk during the reinvention lab, you mentioned, for example, speed, 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 speed. This is obviously mm. an important factor. Yes, the standardization body um, needs to keep up with the development because um, there's a lot of digital companies always um, trying new and new innovations. They are challenging the traditional companies. The traditional companies have to keep up with new developments. And often the uh, pace of innovation is much faster than the ability of standardization bodies to define standards for things that are already being used. And this, of course, is um, yeah, putting into question whether we need standardization bodies at all, or whether the market or technology companies or who else is just, um, yeah, mm -hmm. just providing the facts and just saying this is how it's done and it doesn't matter what anybody decides. And um, to keep up with this uh, challenge, I think standardization bodies have to, first of all, embrace change, have to understand mm -hmm. this is happening, it doesn't matter whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. so the second thing is um, you have to uh, um, 
create ways that decision making is becoming faster. So decisions are um, better, you get a higher quality of decisions and you get um, a higher um, acceptance of standards. So you have to involve a lot of people. You can do that by forming, for example, yeah. virtual communities. You have to share the knowledge so everybody can make the best decision he can. You have to be um, open about the decision processes and the information available. So the acceptance of um, decisions is uh, rapidly improving. Mm. Okay, I mean, uh, standardization uh, in the IEC uh, is uh, based on consensus. Mm -hmm. And this speed or being fast really fits consensus building. What, what would you say to this uh, question or aspect? Uh, there's of course a, um, a tension between finding uh, a solution, very f a very fast solution, and on the hand, other hand, building a consensus takes time. And I think the, the answer to that would be to use as much um, digital inventions as possible to facilitate the consensus making by sharing information, by networking, by connecting people, um, having an ongoing process, for example, about um, standardization and, and decision making, not meeting once or twice a month or a year or whatever be the um, um, appropriate cycle of the uh, uh, body in each industry. Um, Decision making has to be a continuous process and we have to learn that decisions are not necessarily final, that we have to have an agile approach to um, things, that we, um, that we are not done when we have decide decided on something, that, but we have to be ready to um, re-evaluate the decision on the next day and perhaps then um, come, come up with a new generation of the standard and, and, and make it a continuous uh, process of improvement. Okay, so given this and given the trend or the uh, development of digitalization, what would be your main recommendations to the standard makers? My main recommendation would be um, have an open mind, um, don't feel threatened by digitalization, um, share your knowledge so everybody has the same knowledge so there are no silos, no infighting, no politics, that's all slowing down the process of decision making try to find ways of uh, some uh, meritocratic decision making processes, not top down, but the ones with the most knowledge so that should um, be able to, to present their case. And um, if you use this kind of, of uh, um, recipes, a lot of digital companies use to um, yeah, push their inven inventions forward. Then you have a, a standard of tools that you can use in an organization itself so it can be uh, faster and, and get better results. Okay, so thank you a lot, Lars. And uh, yeah, we, we see digitalization affects everything, everyone, and of course, standardization as well. So thank you again. Bye-bye. IEC General Meeting 2016. Connecting Communities. Reinvent Standardization.